Th thank you all for coming. We have a, a, an awesome task here. We have six highly distinguished panelists and something less than 90 minutes to solve the world's problems. Six months ago, it was six months ago now that the Lehman debacle occurred, that AIG was rescued, that Bank of America bought Merrill Lynch. <clears throat> About six months ago that the TARP funds started being distributed. Only on Monday are we going to find out what's really on the bank balance sheets. This frightens me. We've been operating, it seems to me, with so little information. The, uh, the so-called stress tests will be out. I think it says something about the way government has managed this economy. The economy was doing fairly poorly in much of 2008 and then fell off a cliff in the last quarter of 2008 and into 2009, growing, falling at a 6% annual rate, an extraordinary drop in our national income. It is now, by some very important measures, the worst economic recession in post-World War II, the post-World War II era. Employment has dropped faster than ever before in this space of time. Industrial production, and by many other criteria, it's almost the worst, and it isn't over yet. The one last thing I want to say, what gives us all the jitters is that this is a three-front problem. A housing market that went crazy and the bubble burst, a credit crisis, the most severe we've known since the early 1930s, and now a sharp drop in demand for goods and services and capital investment leading to a severe recession. What gives us the jitters is that all of these are related and can make all those other factors worse. I'm not going to talk anymore because we want to hear what our panelists have to say. My job is to try to keep us to time. I've asked each of them to comment in the first six or seven minutes in their introductory remarks on what the current state of the economy is. Many people are saying they're green shoots. We have seen some deceleration in the decline of the economy. Green shoots are showing. What is the actual state of the economy? And do we need a serious mid-course correction on the part of the government? Do we have to change policy and what we should do? All of that in six or seven minutes for each of us. Let's go immediately to Senator Bradley. And again, I will try and keep us on time. Senator. Uh, thanks very much, Jeff. It's an honor for me to be on this panel. I look around at distinguished uh, historians and economists and financiers and wonder what I'm doing here. Uh, but I assume that um, I'm here because I think that any solution to the problem, and certainly even defining the problem that we're facing, has to be able to be defined so the average guy understands. And the solution to the problem has to be given so that the slightly above average guy understands. So uh, how are we along the recovery? I mean, when Citicorp drops from 60 to 1 and then comes back to 3, I don't think that's a recovery. When Warren Buffett buys GE and uh, Goldman Sachs, and after he buys it, it drops 45 to 50 percent, and that if he's going to even break even, he's got to earn 9 percent for the next 12 years, I don't think that's a recovery. Um, if you look at uh, what we should do about this, um, on the one hand, the administration has put in place uh, measures that, if they were to work, could offer some hope. What I'd like to suggest is, if they don't work, there's an alternative. And I'd like to put it uh, this way. You know, we have um, essentially spent uh, about $12.7 trillion dollars in commitments and actually spent a little over four trillion dollars in this crisis. Some institutions, such as Citicor, for example, have received about 60 billion in direct assistance and 340 billion in guarantees. So the U.S. taxpayers into Citicor for about 400 billion dollars. So I look at this and I say, if we look out to June, July, and the PPI program is not succeeding. The assets aren't being bought at levels that they should be bought from the, banks of, from the books of banks. That there is an alternative, because in the interim, between now and then, there will have been a stress test. Few banks will be identified. 
who knows, it might even be postponed. Uh, and also, Secretary Geithner will have the authority to come in and deal effectively and forcefully with non-bank financial institutions. So when I look out to July, August, PPIP isn't working, the stress tests have been delayed, there's an argument about how, whether the government is right or the banks are right, but clearly there are a few that are in very serious problems. And you have uh, the secretary with that new authority. Uh, you think back to Citicorp, we put $400 billion into it. I looked at the ticker today, the market cap of Citicorp is $17 billion. So the government could buy Citicorp for a fraction of what we've already obligated the taxpayer for. And in buying Citicorp, as an example, could be a other, one or two others, it would, the government would announce in four to six months we were going to sell these assets, the good assets, back to the public, who wouldn't pay for the largest depositor base in the world. And if you bought Citicorp for, let's say, $20 billion, what would it be worth if you sold the good bank back to the public? And I mean the public. I don't mean selling it to hedge funds, although they can participate. But I would do it as a rights offering to any American who wants to invest in this good bank. I think the very prospect of that happening would be, bring very strong positive influence on the development of the whole economy. And what would the government then be left with? The government would then be left with the bad bank. It would be left with the assets that we're going through loops now to try to get off of the bank books. And instead, the government would have them and could take 20, 15 to 20 years to, uh, to clean them up. So when I, I look at this, I say I'd like to see the existing program work. If it doesn't work, there is an alternative. And it's an alternative that in the long run, the average guy in America could participate in. Thank you, Senator. Just six minutes. Very impressive. <laughs> Professor Ferguson. Well, Jeff, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, we are living through historic times. This is the end of the age of leverage, which began, I guess, in the late 1970s and saw an explosive rise uh, in the ratio of debt to gross domestic product not only in this country, but in many, many other countries. Uh, once you end up with debts, public, public and private debts, uh, in excess of three and a half times the size of your annual output, you are Argentina. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny that, that people refer all the time back to the Lehman crisis. L let's remember that this crisis actually began in June 2007. It fully became clear in August of 2007 that major financial institutions were almost certainly on the brink of insolvency to anybody who bothered to think about the impacts of subprime defaults on their balance sheets. But we were in denial for an extraordinarily long time. People, both highly sophisticated and lay people, refused to believe what was happening which is why I called it the Great Repression. And we stayed in denial until September, more than a year later of last year. And then we had the breakdown. You'll notice how psychological terms are very helpful when economics fails as a discipline, as it clearly has. So we retreat into the realm of psychology. After the repression, the breakdown, we came out of denial and we realized that probably more than one major bank was insolvent. And in September and October, the world went into shock. It was deeply traumatic. Now we're in the therapy phase. And what therapy are we using? Well, it's very interesting because we're using two quite contradictory courses of therapy. One uh, is the prescription of Dr. Friedman, Milton Friedman, that is. And that's the therapy that's being administered by the Federal Reserve massive injections of liquidity to avert the kind of banking crisis that caused the Great Depression of the early 1930s. I'm fine with that. That's the right thing to do. But there's another course of therapy 
that is simultaneously being administered, which is the therapy prescribed by Dr. Keynes.